Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I don't say this very often at the beginning of my videos, but if you are new here, my name is Abby and I am a stay-at-home mom to four kids currently under 10 for the next about four weeks and we will have a 10 year old um, and I homeschool all of them. And so on this channel, you'll find a lot of homeschooling and cooking and homemaking and just those types of videos. So welcome if you are new. Um, if you're returning, welcome back to my monthly goals video. This is something that I do month to month. I did not do it in the month of January just because um, I kind of take January as like a reset every year just so I can get my footing and kind of see what's going on after the holiday rush, just kind of, it's just a season to resettle for us every year. So I don't usually have big, big plans in the month of January every year. So now that the dust has kind of settled um, from the holidays and we're getting our rhythm back with homeschooling, I can see areas that I would like to focus on. And again, if you are not familiar with my goals videos, I pick one area and four categories to focus on with homeschooling, parenting, family, and a personal goal. And this keeps me from trying to focus on too many things at once. For example, say one month, my personal goal is to drink more water. That is my focus that keeps me from being concerned about um, a certain number of minutes of working out, a certain number of steps taken, a certain way of eating, things like that. If there are other areas I'd like to focus on, I'll say, well, that will be my February goal or my March goal, but this just keeps me on track to where I can put the pressure, uh, take the pressure off of myself as far as too many goals. So every month there's always a little concern with people thinking that I'm biting off more than I can chew, but it's actually the opposite. Just one area of homeschooling keeps me from being hard on myself of you know, with all the different things I think I should be doing when I'm homeschooling and so forth and so on. So I, because I did not do a video in January, I usually start these videos off kind of recapping how my goal for the previous month went. But since I didn't do one in January, I'm just going to dive right in and start talking about some of my goals for the month of February. So my homeschooling goal for the month of February is to bring Eli in with reading. So uh, I just received All About Reading Level 1 for him. Um, I used All About Reading Level 1 for both of my older kids, uh, and I absolutely loved it. They both have very different learning styles. I will be doing many a dedicated video on um, on All About Reading and how reading is going with Eli because I'm going to be working with All About Learning Press um, for the next year or so. Um, I, they just recently updated their curriculum to have it in full color and they also have their second edition. So I taught both of my kids all about reading level one and level two with their first edition. So the second edition is a little bit different and now they have the second edition in color, which is what I'll be using. So I needed to update my materials. So I just received that from them. Um, I am very excited to start him on reading. He has been wanting to read since the beginning of this school year and I actually think he was probably ready from the beginning of this school year but and you guys know kind of how this goes my son my seven-year-old who was six at the beginning of this school year um, was a struggling reader and I wasn't purposely holding I wasn't holding my, my other son back too much there were other things we could work on to help with some reading readiness but I just knew that if I would have started my four-year-old reading that he would very quickly have been in the same place as my six-year or my seven-year-old and that would be very very discouraging to my seven-year-old so instead I chose to work on my seven-year-old's fluency with him he is flying right now he's doing amazing um, and, it, and I worked on sight words and letter sounds and things with my four-year-old who is now five so I feel like we're in a very good place both with my seven-year-old's confidence and my now five-year-old's readiness um, to go ahead and bring him in. But and that'll be, like I said, a whole nother video, but just know that everybody in my family is very excited for him and he is very excited to learn how to read. So we're gonna be starting to bring him in. Also in our homeschool, the reason this is my homeschooling goal, I feel like we are in a very good place with our homeschool right now. You guys saw my last morning basket video. I was very excited about it. I feel like I've been able to kind of shed the expectations that I put on myself um, very often. I'm sure many of you guys do as well. So I feel like I was able to let those go and really let those go and I'm just really enjoying where we're at. So now I feel like I can find the right place and the right space for him in our homeschool to where I can step away from the older kids and work with him individually on some reading. 
and how to work that into our schedule. So our parenting goal this month is actually our parenting goal. John is not usually a part of my little goal setting here because he just I mean, he basically is a part of it because I start talking about it a ton, so then he gets on board, but some things he doesn't know is like my December goal or my November goal, but this is something we actually have both started talking about a lot lately, which is why I decided to make it my official parenting goal, is follow through. Um, now, we are at the one year mark of him being home from his old job, and one thing that I haven't talked about much, I've talked about how he's physically home more, but the biggest change besides the fact that he's home eight hours a day more than he was before um, is now that he's available more. So he stops by a lot if we need him to or if he wants to. He's available on the phone. I can reach him by text. We kind of try to respect the boundaries with, with texting each other instead of calling because I could call him and he could be with a client or he could call me and I could be in the middle of a math lesson neither one of us will ever really want to ignore a phone call because you know there's always that concern that it's something important so unless it is something super important we don't make the phone call but we do text a lot and so he's available to text a lot more often and there's a phone call available if we need um with discipline or things like that so um so it's just we've kind of been learning how to navigate these waters of availability um, and him being around to help with the um, discipline, both good and bad. So he, um, there was, it's kind of, I feel bad saying it this way because it's already so blurry one year in, I can barely remember what it used to be like, but I do know that we really struggled to find a balance with the follow through because it was, it always had to be me. Just because I was physically present. He would have 100% been there to support me if he could have been, but he just wasn't here. So all he could do is what he could do from a distance. So um, one year in now, we've started to realize that when he came home, or not came home, but when he left that job and became more available and was home more often, that I immediately backed off with any follow through or kind of discipline that I would have and that was for two reasons one i was just plain tired and i just chose to drop the ball and kind of back out and catch my breath which i don't think there's much wrong with it other than the fact that my mentality then shifted from i'm going to take a breath to i'm going to shift all of this responsibility onto john um but two i also didn't want to step on his toes and i wanted to find a, a, a way and kind of find our balance with um the kids falling into our new normal. And John was very respectful of that as well. He didn't want to come home and immediately take over and kind of disrespect the way that things had been set up for so long because that's not gonna help the kids cultivate any kind of good relationship or good respect there um, if that's what happened. Now, of course, they respected him. He was very, he's he's an easy guy to respect. He's full of integrity. But um, I just, we both kind of didn't know how to navigate these waters. So one thing that we've noticed a ton lately is just that neither one of us have much follow through, <clears throat> which is something that we've always really, um, if you're familiar with Kirk Martin from Celebrate Calm, he's the first person who really kind of stuck with us um, when he said it was that how much kids respect and desire that follow through. And the example that he uses is, Tell your, if you tell your kids if they don't clean your room, you're gonna throw their Legos in the fire pit, then you better throw their Legos in the fire pit if they don't clean their room. Not because they need to see that you mean what you say, but because that shows them that there are boundaries, that you love them, and that yes, you do mean what you're gonna say and you're gonna follow through. So not out of fear, but more out of um, discipline and love, you're going to follow through. One, that keeps you from saying crazy things like, I'm going to throw your Legos in the fire. And two, it cultivates that habit of um, the kids being obedient, but also you not throwing these crazy things out there, which I think happens a lot. Like, you know, when you're potty training saying, I'll take you to Disney World or vice versa. Um, if you don't clean your room, I'm going to burn everything that's on the ground. So those kinds of things that we do that's really just outlandish, but we say them because we're just grasping for some kind of response. If you follow through on the small things, it kind of everything falls into place. So we've noticed that because there's been a lack of follow through in certain things, there's been a lot more whining, there's been a lot more struggle with the bedtime routine, and it's not their fault. Um, 
we've left it open to negotiation just by choosing not to follow through. And so both of us realized the other night, like we're kind of, we're kind of whiny with them when it comes to the bedtime routine and things like that. So what it really comes down to is some gentle follow through. So we're not going to just flip a switch and all of a sudden start acting crazy and, and doing things that the kids aren't used to us doing, but we're definitely wanting to take this month to focus on easing back into having that good, respectable, um, but also kind follow through. So much like our homeschooling goal of reading, our family goal this month, my family goal, is to cultivate more of a reading time in our family. Um, it used to be something that I loved to do, uh, even up till last year, was I would read a bedtime story with the kids every single night. That's something that, again, because of that like bedtime struggle that we've been having for the last few months, but also because I just have enjoyed having my husband here in the evenings. Um, I have not been reading to the kids every evening, but what, something kind of ha cool happened a couple weeks ago where John was playing the guitar, Bella and I have been reading Little Women, so she was in the room and I handed her Little Women to show her that I had read a couple of chapters and now she could catch up with me. I'll put the link up here if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and the boys were in because I had gotten this new chocolate tea and they wanted to try the tea. So we were all in the same room, Bella was reading, I grabbed my book, and John's playing music. Next thing you know, the boys grabbed books, Annabeth grabbed a book, and we're all sitting on the floor reading books, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is like one of my heart's desires, and it just naturally occurred. And so John has really been on this kick about keeping our phones away in the evenings. It's something that I've wanted, kind of wanted to do, but also kind of not wanted to do, because I kind of like chilling out on my phone at night. But we've been putting our phones away, and so we've just this whole environment that promotes reading and togetherness has happened. And one of the things that we've done um, since the holidays with our organization was put more individual bookshelves like in the kids' rooms and not just in the school room and in a storage area. So um, books are just much more accessible than they were before, which is something that I love. And so um, my goal, my family goal this month is to just every, every few days at least just cultivate a time where we can all be reading together or reading more bedtime stories or I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna look but it is my goal in the month of February to focus on having time together and um, separate but also reading. Um, just some focused time to be reading as a family because that's, that's a memory I really desire my kids to have when they get older is to just remember that we all read together, that mommy read stories, that daddy read stories, that we read books together. We read a lot of books in our homeschool, but outside of school hours, we're not reading much together. So that is my goal in the month of February. And then my personal goal, my favorite one to pick. Um, I am trying to run at least one day a week. Running is something that I absolutely adore. Um, it's, it's been, I've been running for 20 years. My dad and I just realized on our run last week that we've been running for 20 years together. Um, the very first time I put this on Instagram, but the very first time that I went running with him, now he was training for a marathon at the time and it was one of his like recovery runs, like a three mile run. And I remember I was outside practicing for a soccer game, but I still had, um, like cut off jean denim shorts and I had, um, uh, like my school uniform polo on and you know I'm like a just kicking the soccer ball around thinking I'm Miss Athletic and I'm like well you know what my, my dad went running down the road and he's like hey Ab, I'm going for a run you want to come and I was like sure so I ran inside to put on my tennis shoes because I was wearing flip-flops and um, he says he just remembers hearing down the road dad wait and I had run and caught up with him and we ran for three miles that day and he never, he didn't think I was going to actually come. And I don't know what prompted me. Every time he went out for a run, he'd say, hey, Ab, why don't you join me? Hey, Ab, why don't you join me? And that one day I did. And I absolutely loved it. And, um, and I kind of put away every other sport that I was playing. And I started running with him and joined cross country team, joined track team. And um, it's just become a lifelong passion. But 
as a mom now, the struggle that I've had is with extended time off, with different pregnancies, nursing, I always ended up with mastitis with when, run, when I was running and all these sorts of things, is that of course my times are not what they were when I was 15. So something that I've struggled with is running but kind of getting all of that race mentality out of my head, but I feel like I'm finally in a place where it's become enjoyable and healthy and very relaxing for me. So one thing that I wanna do is put away that competitive side of running and just run one day a week and just enjoy it. I made a playlist that is just for running. Um, and I have been doing the lift four program from beach body before that I was doing 80 day obsession before that I was doing 21 day fix before that I was doing Pio. I'm very like program oriented so I can continue to do those things. But one thing I just want to do is connect with nature, get outside and take a good run um the nice thing is my dad only lives just barely two miles away i think it's just a little less so something we've been doing is i've been running and picking him up and we've been going for a run or he's runs to me and picks picks me up and we go for a run this way so that's been really enjoyable as well and um i appreciate that my dad still runs with me um and that you know i can still keep up with him believe it or not so he's a really he's really good um and he's pushed me even 20 years later, he still pushes me um, and I appreciate it. And it's very, um, it's such a blessing of a time to run with him, but I also enjoy running by myself if, if he's not available, <laughs> otherwise I'll always run with him. So those are my goals. I never think I'm gonna chat as long as I do. I try to keep things like short and sweet when I can here on, on, on YouTube, not Instagram, but, um, when it comes to things like this that are not always just homeschooling related, I, I kind of enjoy just having a little chit chat time. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Let me know what some of your goals are for the month of February in the comments below, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.